the audio here. Okay. Sorry for the wait, everybody, but I appreciate your patience. Welcome to another episode of the Melee Monkeys with co-host Brashear. Hello, everyone. And uh, tonight we have a special guest. Uh, it is the the other half of the Sevti Bubble Foundry combination. Uh, we, he's uh, one of our range DPS. He's a hunter, a very pretty hunter, as you can see from the transmog in the corner. Uh, Ankel. Howdy. Uh, also, he's actually Hank Hill, or just so you know. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the I other. I live with uh, Batman too. Yeah. I wonder who that is. Yeah, the Batman, the Batman. <laughs> so uh, tonight we're gonna talk about uh, something, some things we did over the week as usual in our uh, on our raids. Uh, Monday we did some uh, normal black hand killing. Uh, Tuesday we did a bunch of stuff, uh, and night we did um, some heroic attempts on blast furnace. So we're gonna kind of talk about all the uh, all of that. So uh, tonight we'll start with on Monday. Hopefully, uh, and kills memory is better than brashes and can remember some things. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> basically, Monday uh, we did all of like normal basically and or no we extended the lockout yeah and uh we went to black hand now <clears throat> i know brash i want to kind of jump into get brash's perspective first just because i know how much he loves this fight and i really want his his take on it so oh, <laughs> man i don't know we're gonna start it off with the party pooper because i want to get it done party it over pooper? with done, okay. done it over with i mean i'm gonna blame a lot of it just on my mood I just I just haven't really been into like the game lately like that much other than raiding and it's starting to kind of get boring. And that fight was just it felt like I was just running around with my head cut off. I have I have no dots and stuff, so it felt like I was just chasing things. Um, yeah, it just it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It, it I don't know. I don't help me elaborate on that. <laughs> well, I mean, is there anything specific that you really hated? I know we talked about a little bit the other day about. Uh, the mechanic of getting jumping up onto the balcony, um, which yeah. kind of felt like a useless mechanic for melee to have to do, in my opinion. What what are your thoughts? On right, it? yeah, we were talking about it, and it's like okay, so there's there's ads up there, so you can kind of AOE cleave, and um, it's like okay, this might be this might be worth it, and you spend you know like thirty seconds flying in the air, and then you find a mob, and then you're dying, so you're like trying to keep yourself alive. And you kill like three mobs, and then you're like dead, and you're trying to jump off the platform, and get back to the boss. Takes another thirty seconds of running around. Um, I can't leap over anything because it triggers the bombs, so I'm literally just running like a slowpoke, and it just tanks your, your damage. It just feels like it feels bad. Um, it's not like the uh, the uh, what is it? The very first fight fight Cargath in Heimel, mm. where it throws you up in the stands, and you're like, oh, this is awesome. I can blade storm and stuff, and uh, it feels like a good thing, kind of. Yeah. Um it this one just doesn't feel good in my opinion. Yeah. Uh as large said there uh in Mythic Kills and you brought up too Brash that uh Boomkins were the ones that went up and just kind of nuked everything which does make more sense um to me. Um so Ankil, I know uh you were in charge of kind of like or trying to be in charge of kiting the cannons in the second phase. Uh did you find that like really like annoying or difficult or was it kind of just like you're kind of just running and doing what you normally do anyway i was kind of just running and doing what i normally do i mean the only time it got uh a little bit hairy is uh if uh if melee was kind of running over into the same corner i was cutting the kin to um there was one or two points where i had to uh deterrence and then disengage and try to not take damage uh and get out of the corner i ended up in and I uh, also had a couple of cases where a tank was down and uh, people got like a harpoon or whatever it is he throws out. And uh, that would throw somebody randomly up against where the next siege tank was coming out and there's no way I could get to it to kite it. Um, in fact, I think during the cloud, I yelled at, uh, I had to holler at Bella to run away from the tank because she had got harpooned up against the wall as soon as the tank came out and she had to kite it. But, um, Apart from that, it's, it's 
I run around just as much as I normally do during a raid. Now that I can move during my steady shot and uh, whatever the green one is, Cobra shot. <laughs> <laughs> I see Enkil uh, suffers from a similar case of, of what I have. <laughs> I can't remember names of anything. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So, well, that's interesting because, like, uh, it just seems it seems like you kind of just do what you normally do, anyways. But I, it's uh, I mean, because I assume hunters just literally like troll the lol all day, all day, in fights. That's what I assume. I just assume you just jump up and down the whole time. Oh yeah, I, I do for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I I know. Uh, well, what is your overall impression of the fight and kill? Do you enjoy it? Do you think it's kind of meh? Do you hate it? Like, um, I think it's kind of easy, honestly. Um, from a range perspective, it's it's there's there's not really any difficulty to it. Um, I can tell that it's healing intensive, but the only time that it's kind of annoying is when I have to run away from stuff falling down in phase one. But. Right. Yeah, it, it's an, it's an easy fight for ranged overall. Well, ranged that can move while casting. I don't know about uh, mages or warlocks or those other uh, classes that <laughs> every other really that good. <laughs> every yeah. other ranged ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because I know uh, from my perspective, and probably same with Brash, is that it that fight is so melee unfriendly. It's laughable. Like most of the time, we're kind of like okay, melee. Most of these fights, like even in high mall, it wasn't too bad but there was some fights that were really melee unfriendly and it was just like okay so what the hell are we even doing here and uh we were talking about it and last like last night i think or the night before and basically we concluded that blizzard took a like was smoking something when they made this fight and they were like well we don't need we don't need all the melee in this fight we they, you can ha they can have a rogue that's all they need and then everyone else is ranged and it's just like cool so all of us are kind of like shafted and there's because basically like there's shit to avoid which is normal it's like fine first phase i find is totally totally fine second phase is kind of like what are we even doing and plus we're going me and brash and ren are going up to the stands which is like <clears throat> like brash said it's a like time loss and like damage loss and all this shit and we're just like okay cool this is fun in the last phase where you get knocked back and i mean that's probably annoying for almost everyone except for like hunters basically but it's just like <laughs> it's, we're like literally like what the fuck do melee do in this fight like how do we even so um i actually like the fight though but i agree that there's a lot of issues with the fight for melee um so it's Sorry, like, go ahead. I wouldn't say it's like super like terrible for melee. It's just it's not exceptional. Like there's nothing. There's no like out, there was something like um, out of the fr the first like twenty or so mythic kills of Blackhand, there was like one warrior DPS, and I think there was two DKs out of all the kills, and then there was like you know fifty five boomkins, <laughs> and and warlocks and whatnot. And you're like okay, so and hunters actually do really well too. And it's just like, what were they? What were they smoking? Like, you can't make the final boss. Um, I don't know. You, like, I don't know what. Like, it just seems weird. Um, sorry, lost my train of thought there. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's definitely. Oh, hey, Cerisi. It's uh, it's definitely interesting. Uh, and it's. And it's, I don't know, it's just like, I don't want to make an alt, but I know, like, if I did make an alt, I would be a hunter, because I know that they're, A, they're really good, like, Ankyl, you're, you're quite up there and damaged, uh, like, with us, and on, on a lot of the fights, and it's just like, how do you even, and, because you're definitely one of the better hunters we have, and it's just kind of like, every time I see you creep up there, I'm just like, what? Like, I don't understand, and, uh, I'm actually interested. This is uh, I'm interested in what is your four set and what does it do. Um, I don't even have my four set yet. Wow. But um, <laughs> I I've got three right now. But with uh, survival, my four set would uh, increase the damage on my multi strikes, which would actually uh, help me out a lot because already if you look at um, damage meters like uh, I guess it's got a um. The majority of my damage is actually multi-strike. 
like if you if you look at the uh, at final numbers, my multi strike bar is uh, bigger than my crits and my hits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so uh, so when I do get the four piece, uh, maybe you guys won't start taking back over during execute phases. Yeah. Because survival doesn't have an execute. Right. That's that's insane though. Multi strike is insane for a lot of classes, but that just seems like crazy, crazy good. Yeah, I, I think it has something to do with uh, with survival. Most of the damage that we do is really short term uh, ticking damage. Right. They're, they're not meant to be 100% uptime, except for serpent sting. You know, explosive shot is three ticks. Black arrow doesn't have 100% uptime. So if they're multi striking, then they're proccing a lot more than uh, than I guess what Blizzard intended more or less originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but... it just makes it completely OP. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. I know. I actually have a random question, just because I, I, I don't I haven't asked any hunters because I want to know on my hunter. I'm playing survival. I'm a little bit off topic, but I just want to ask: Is for that explosive shot? Do you want to let it completely tick all the way and then reapply it, or do you want to just like when it procs, you just use it immediately? Actually, uh, as of this uh, most recent expansion, damage does not clip anymore. It stacks. Oh. Ah. Yeah, so you can just you can just throw it out. The only time that you want to uh hold back a little bit is uh whenever you do get the four set because the uh, multi strike buff is uh you know, a, a certain duration. Um but it's even then I mean you're using it enough that it's not really a big deal, you just just keep casting it. Right. Cool. Okay. So uh okay, so so overall, like Brash, you're not a big fan of the fight. Again, like you said, you're not really into much of live WoW. And I mean, I kind of feeling the same a little bit where it feels like it's getting a little bit because I only need two more pieces myself, uh, heroic, and then I'm kind of done. And um, I know Day was talking about how he uh, literally needs no, no gear. He needs mythic gear at this point. And uh, so it's this fight is fun for me like i find it fun and i think i as i said to brash the other day too is that um i was doing relatively well because i was using necrotic plague and I've, I've started switching to necrotic plague uh for single target fights which have been like it's actually done really freaking well like i top an or gorger like what so um that's kind of nice so that's probably another reason why i enjoyed black Anne because i was doing okay but so I think overall the fights could be better, but I think um, overall it's like it's okay. So, um, and unless you guys have anything you want to comment on, um, do you have ankle? Do you have any like? Do you ever? Bleh, 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 sorry. Do you <laughs> think uh, there's any better strategies we could be doing for maybe range specifically? Because me and Brash, we have the same kind of mentality because we're we're melee and we're always in there. But we don't really see a lot of the range perspective because we haven't really talked to many range DPS. We've only had a day and then a bunch of healers. <laughs> so, uh, so for, from your perspective, is there anything on Blackhand specifically that you think would be beneficial to uh, change for maybe maybe uh, ranged or even the the whole the whole raid? Um. Honestly, it's, it's it's hard for me to tell because I'm not sure how uh, healing is on that fight. So I'm not sure if stacking is uh, detrimental mm. or if uh, or if it's better to stay spread. Um, but it would be it would be nice if all the uh, range are sort of cognizant of where the siege tanks are in phase two. Mm -hmm. Because if if you get a random spear or whatever on you in phase two, uh, and the siege tank is on the complete other side of the room. Then you're going to just mess everybody up, especially melee, who are, you know, if, if someone's doing it right, someone's doing it wrong, because it's always two spirits at the same time, and that really limits uh, where melee can stand. It can be a, a problem there. Mm -hmm. But I think as as long as range, keep an eye on where the siege tanks are in phase two. That was the only thing I really said. We maybe could have done a little bit better. Yeah. Well, I noticed it was a little bit hectic for the range, like um, like, like people calling out stuff like like run like telling people to having to run and stuff like that and i noticed there was a couple of times where the tank like ran literally over all of the melee and i'm like what is happening so 
because I don't I honestly don't even know how the mechanic works because I don't always listen to the whole explanation that Joel says so I kind of just like okay that's a range thing so I'm gonna let the range listen to that and I'm just gonna zone out and do something so so well, the, uh, so the spears do they are those those target people and then the the dude goes on the cannon goes on to them or the spears target people and what you have to do is uh you have to have something intercept the spear oh okay um, in phase one it's like the little little rubble piles whatever in phase two it's oh, the uh, right. siege tanks right and the spears actually damage the siege tanks right and um the point that you said about with the with the tank running over you guys when i run you guys over with my tank uh, <laughs> the reason i do that is because um there are bombs near you guys and i have to run over the bombs um, I try to not run you guys over, but if I got to choose between uh, hitting a bomb and missing it, I'm going to hit the bomb. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And see, like now, I'm glad because now I know. <laughs> the more you know, <laughs> kids, knowledge is power. Well, you should know this by now. <clears throat> uh, as melee, it's survival of the fittest. You know, like sometimes <laughs> you just got to avoid stuff. Like <laughs> sometimes you just don't call something out, and half the melee dies. And you know, that's just how it goes. <laughs> I know. <Samuel> knows. <laughs> he got me killed that one fight. Uh, yeah, I know it's it's un it's it's funny because like, yeah, I don't I I don't know that quite yet. Like I I should know, but I don't, and it's just like my <laughs> brain's kind of like dirt. So no, it's kind of it's, it's I'm half joking, half yeah. joking, half joking. There's yeah. there's some truth there. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So okay. So we'll uh, unless you guys have any other comments uh, or concerns about that fight, uh, we'll move on to what we did on Tuesday. Well, I just wanted to back up what uh, Ankill said with Black Hand. Like, I know on the first two polls, I think I popped bombs, like, on the first two polls. And I was like, okay, so I got to, like, you know, pay attention. Mm -hmm. And once I did, I don't think I popped another one after after that. And uh, um, it, it, was a pre it seemed pretty easy overall, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I was just kind of let down. Right. Easy, you know, it took us a while, but at the same time, like, I wasn't really challenged, if you know what I mean. Yeah. wasn't. You know, I kind of felt like by the third poll, I knew what I was doing. Um, other than maybe the last phase, that took a few attempts because we had never seen it. Uh, yeah, oh man, and that final phase is like half the time I'm running back to the boss because of knockback, and that's the execute phase, and I'm just like, oh my god. Whoever designed this fight, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but... I, I gotta say, um... It, it's hard for me to take your complaint seriously because this makes up for everywhere else that Warrior is completely OP. <laughs> you know, this one. That's true. That's, that's I'm true. I'm actually I'll, really. I'll give you that. That's a good point, and I'm really happy you said that. Thank you. <laughs> I'll give you that, but I feel like if you if on the final boss, it should be a good fight for everyone, or like a fun fight. You know, that's kind of how I see it. Like you can have some some crappy fights mid raid, but I don't know the final one. That's the most important one. And I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I'm basically... Just so you guys can see the... the nice. Basically, whenever anything comes up... I just put that up there because uh, Inkle said Brash is OP. Basically, I've decided that whenever Brash complains or talks about Bladestorm, that is what <laughs> you guys are going to see. That's awesome. It makes me happy. Yep. I, it's got some bad transparency yeah. too, so I got to fix that. But whatever, so that's fine. It's fine. Okay, oh, yeah, so the it gets the point across. Exactly. Oh, is this is this it? Is this what? It, yes, it is. Oh, okay. I got to put this up. I'm sorry. <laughs> one sec. Um, okay, so we'll <clears throat> we'll move on. We shall move on to uh, to Tuesday, and basically we kill Beast Lord, Operator, and Iron Maidens on heroic. Um, and I know Brash, you missed Beast Lord and Operator. What did I you say? I missed them. <laughs> no. Yeah, I missed. I missed a few fights. So yeah. So, um, oh my god. So basically, um, Beast Lord was kind of like meh. It's just typical Beast Lord and shit dies. Whatever. Operator, same kind of thing. Iron Maidens. Um, the only thing that I have written down to talk about that very briefly is uh i think a bunch of people i know in black hand actually like literally everyone was dead and there was like three people up i think ankill was one of the people up and it was just like like butt clench um and we got the kill 
and I know Iron Maidens was similar. There's still more people up, but a majority of the melee were dead, I think, at the very end. Um, which was, uh, but I got my four set. I got the gloves, which I was really excited about, and I think that's helped a lot. Uh, Flame Bender. I wanted to talk about Flame Bender. Brash wasn't there, but mm. can I just say, what the actual fuck was going <laughs> on? <laughs> seriously <laughs> i don't oh yeah this is because i left right after iron maidens and you guys went to do flamebender yes and okay i don't even seriously i don't even know what was a joke it was flamebender is a joke but this was like we should have killed it w- one shot it should have been one shot but we died like three or four times and i just want to know and kill from a ranged perspective what the fuck was going on with the ranged <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the reason we failed most of the time was because of the Cinder Wolves. Now what happens is the Cinder Wolves come out, and they and they uh, fixate on one range for a little bit, then fixate on another range for a little bit, then they switch. Well, what happened with uh, with at least one of the wipes was uh, Cinder Wolf went on somebody who was on the very, very, very far right of the room. So we all kind of migrated over there to kill it. Then... Uh, Let's see, I think it, I think that was the last person it was on. Then it switched, and then the overheated one became the regular Cinder Wolf. You know, they kind of swip, uh, switch places, and it immediately ran to the very, very, very far left of the room to, like, the one healer who was left over there. And so all the range had to run back over to that. Mm. While not while not running through melee, because we don't want to have those swords in there because Lords will cry. <laughs> and uh, we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to get in the middle of that breath that... Uh, you know, that Micra's kind of pointing away from everybody uh, on the overheated wolf. So, when there's that much movement like that, <laughs> there's that much movement like that, uh, it really just throws off killing the wolves. And then, uh, you know, melee, they just kind of stand there and execute crap out of everything. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I wasn't there. <laughs> well, meanwhile, meanwhile yes, Rage is just trying to throw, trying to throw their range attacks um, while running around the long way, it, it doesn't work. Right. Uh, uh, but um, whenever we kill it, it, it's it's it just so happens that the the wolf that we have to kill always ends up like dead center of the room. So range on the left and right can both just kind of hit it right there in the middle, and damage on it isn't a problem. Right. If yeah, the well, Cinder Wolves go smoothly, the entire fight goes smoothly. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys noticed, but like, uh, if if the ranged wolf isn't dying, I normally heroic leap out and help kill it. Um, so I don't know if that would have helped the situation. I think it would have, because I don't run out there because I'm slow as fuck. Like, yeah. I, I have, like, sure, I have, like, added run speed from, I think, from my, <clears throat> from Unholy. But I, th- I think actually now I'm thinking about it. I think my cloak because it already gives me ten percent. Um, I think I only get. I don't think it stacks. I think I only get five percent from my unholy, and then my speed boost, which will get me there quickly, but it won't get me back quickly. So I'm gonna be running through shit, and it's gonna be annoying. And it's just like, otherwise I would. If I had a fast way of getting there and back, it'd be fine. But, yeah. So, I just yeah, use it when I got DK mixes there. We've already wiped. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly also there's another thing um i noticed with the fire chain between the wolves i don't know if you have to jump or not but i always jump him um, but if you quickly run through it and jump you won't get a stack of the the fire debuff off the chain oh. uh, most of the time sometimes you will but um yeah i'll give you stutter step arculos anyways um okay yeah because i was just like i just didn't even understand because i was obviously focusing on what the hell what melee was doing and so i i just assumed something was going on and so it kind of makes sense i think i think everyone was just like was kind of like out of focus a little bit at that point and they were kind of like meh but it was it was pretty brutal to have to wipe that many times on flame bender in my opinion Fuck, there's a bat in my room oh my god where the <laughs> hell where the- <laughs> wow <laughs> what the shit I didn't Can even notice. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, holy Christ on a cracker. 
That was pretty oh, good. That was great. I love Sev T. Oh my god. Oh, anyway, that's Sev T? Of course Kappa. it's Sev T. Kappa. Kappa. <laughs> Kappa. Kappa. There you go. That's Batman. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Right. Hank Hills uh, lives with Batman. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was I'm, I it actually kind of scared me because I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at chat, and then all of a sudden I just see like this black thing come out of nowhere, and I'm like, "What is happening?" <laughs> uh, cool. Well, so yeah, I know Brash can't really comment on what was happening, but I can assure you it was terrible. It was. I'll comment. It, it was, it, if it I was, was the there, worst. it'd be one shot. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Honestly, it might have been a two shot. I think we still would have wiped at least once, but it might have been a bit better the second time. I mean, the range we could we can really use uh, Brush's charity blade storms out there. Yeah, <laughs> that, that blade storm, that blade storm must activate blade storm. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know what happened, but I like I start running blade storm in that fight now. Um, I used to like when I first did it, I ran blade storm, but I swapped out, um, and it was working better without it. But I probably the two piece or something made it so the blade storm's better again. There you go. Gotta have, gotta have that advanced tactics as well. Yeah, I can love it's a that. It's face massage while you're doing it, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, no wonder you, do you don't it. need. To, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you can't click any buttons. You literally can't. You can't go wrong. You know, see, I could use my keyboard, but I use a gamepad, and it just doesn't roll as well as the keyboard. So it won't. It wouldn't work as well for that, me. That works better for the head desk, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fail moments. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't do that because I use a noggin. I use just the little side buttons to do all my DPS. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, could do that. Yeah. Backed. I could just palm it, I guess, from the side. Oh, wait, Ankel, <laughs> what do you do with the other hand? Don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can, snap. I can answer or a safety can. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. This is <laughs> this this <laughs> podcast has been brought to you by XXX. Um, so okay, so okay, so basically that's what we did Tuesday. It wasn't a whole lot. I got my four set. I don't know if anybody got any loot that was significant on Tuesday. No guns. Yeah. What? It, yeah. That's don't understand. No. No. Uh, no. Um, whatever your class is, hunter weapons, which is strange. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So we'll move on to, uh, oh, wait, that's supposed to be in story time. Tsk, tsk, tsk. That is just unacceptable. Um, okay, so Thursday, so today, obviously. I, I am failing. I'm failing pretty hard. So, what is, stop it. Okay, sorry. My computer is being annoying. So, basically tonight, we... Did we have we have special guest Caliwag? He is ridiculously cute, but you can't see him. See, you can... oh my! <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so today we did just a few th few bosses. We did Orgorder, Gruel, and we attempted Blast Furnace. Gruel, I decided to go because normally I do Defile because that's supposed to be me, be my best single target. But I was like, okay, fuck it, I'm going to try Necrotic Plague, because it was, it was pretty good for a single target on other bosses. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'm going to try it. And I got third, but only Day, like, barely beat me on, with I guess, his Execute. Because his Execute is probably actually stronger than mine, because mine lasts from 45% uh, percent on, but it's, like, less damage. But he beat me by, like, 0 0.06 mil on Gruel. And I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" And I was really sad. How 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 much? Because I know, I know Brash enjoys Gruel now. He first hated it. And Kill, this fight is probably extremely boring. Is it extremely boring for you? Oh yeah, I mean, occasionally I, I try and figure out what I can do in that fight to get myself killed, and I usually can't figure out a way to do it. Um, 
because it's just kind of sit there. Oh, here comes a here comes a, a big dust cloud. That means there's damage there in probably like five seconds. Let me just let me just saunter on out of that real quick. <laughs> or, uh, here's here's a here's a little circle in the ground. The the roof is caving in or whatever. Let me just let me just walk out of that real quick. Yeah. Uh, petrified uh, thing. Uh, let me just disengage real quick. <laughs> I mean, it, it's oh you know there's there's nothing to it. Yeah, because it's pretty boring for for me. It's probably boring for everybody, honestly, except maybe the tanks because they kind of have to do something. But it's uh, it's not particularly an advanced advanced tactic fight. Um, and I don't think anybody uh, you know, I, needs anything off that boss. Sorry, go ahead. I, I think uh, I think large wipe is just to have something happen in that fight that was interesting. Oh yeah, I don't even know what large was doing, but he was taunting a little too early twice and uh the second time made us wipe because large is pro strats oh i see why would you yeah. <laughs> that's even <laughs> that's even worse <laughs> i'm just gonna taunt every time it's on cooldown <laughs> just like spam taunt it's so. part of his rotation he has a he has a macro down to uh to maul <laughs> <laughs> probs. It probs does. Hashtag just bear things. Hashtag because we are all twelve. Um so cool. So <clears throat> not much to say about Gruel. It's boring. Um Oh <clears throat> or Gorger was interesting for me. I don't know about anybody else, but I was really stoked because I that was the first time I tried Necrotic Plague on it. Because him running around and shit, uh necrotic plague i know is is super strong so like if it's on him while he's running around i'm still getting massive damage on him and it turned out to be really useful because i somehow topped um the 33k i don't know how i actually topped it was kind of like just like i, I guess i just used my cooldowns at the right time um but i was just for whatever reason for gruel and for orgorge i was just like super pumped i was just like super happy and i was listening to some dub and i was just like so into it and oh I, I don't know it was just good but are you I th see it's it sucks because at this point we've kind of done these bosses so many times that like in kill like are you over this fight as much as probably everyone else is or do you actually enjoy this fight because it's 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 probably not so bad for range especially for hunter because you can attack while it's moving well, I, I will say, if Arculus wasn't there yelling where we have to go, um, I would do a lot worse on that fight, I'm sure. Because I never actually spin the camera around and see where the boss is. Um, and I think if I, if I didn't ignore that mechanic, uh, it would probably be a little bit more difficult for me. Um, beyond that, I just run around uh, Arcane Shot, everything to put Serpent Sting on it. Um, all I do is dot up all the crates, all the crates I can, because oh, yeah. uh, survival doesn't have burst damage. Um, what we do have is a uh, pretty good AOE, especially if it's really spread out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, because <clears throat> that's the thing, is dots are really nice, and that's why Brash likes to complain about some of the AOE fights, because he... <laughs> He doesn't doesn't have dots, and then when he if he goes arms, he has dots, but he hates them. So it's like he wants the dots, but he doesn't want the dots, and he's like really emo about it or something. I don't know. It's like it's like a it's not exactly a love hate because there's no love. It's just like kind of jealousy hate. <laughs> I don't know because dots are amazing for certain fights, but yeah, I hate them. I like automatic ones like DK dots are great. Just like. It's kind of like that face roll <laughs> for that. Yeah. It's Sorry, uh, I missed um which fight are we currently talking about? Or Gorger. Or Gorger. I did pretty well tonight. I was happy. I chased the boss and DPS'd him. It was great. Oh, was I know. Like a dog chasing a car. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't chase him that much, but like there was times where I I took some risks and I did get hit. I thought it was far enough away, but I got hit. But it didn't one-shot me. So I was like, "Oh, thank Christ almighty." And uh, and yeah, I used Necrotic Plague, and it, I somehow topped, and it was like insane. So, well, I made like a decision. Basically, we went into the uh, final f phase, the rolling phase, and it, just as he hit execute, and I was like, "Damn!" I got like all my cooldowns up, and I, I waited for this, mm. and 
I so I popped everything, and I so I actually that's why yeah, I chased them. I popped everything at that point, and I think it was the right call because by the time we got back to like the still phase, um, he was like five percent, and my cooldowns would have you know been wasted. I don't right. Know. Um, yeah. yeah, it was um, it was okay. It was my PV DPS. I think I just I did like thirty thirty one k. Yeah, you did thirty one. I did thirty three. Um, and. Yeah, sorry, and my brain just kind of was like, how has it already been an hour? But it hasn't. We've, I've had the stream going for a bit, but it's fine. I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to cut it early. Fuck that shit. Anyways, so, <laughs> yeah, and no, yeah. so Orgorger was pretty decent. I mean, it sucks because I don't need anything off Gruul or Orgorger. I only need it off two bosses, I think. I don't know. It's whatevs. Um, yeah, and then Sevti brought up, Chromog. I completely forgot about Chromog because I fight. I don't even know why I forgot it because normally I remember it because I do pretty well on that fight generally. But now, like, do you do you stick with survival on that fight or is it? Uh, do you switch specs at all for Chromog? Thank uh, you. Survival definitely. Yeah. Um. I mean, when I when I get um when we go into the the runes or whatever, uh, I throw out a barrage. I throw out a a trap, usually. And uh, then I'll just uh, multi-shot around everywhere because the multi-shot will also apply Serpent Sting to every target it hits. Right. Which uh, which helps a lot. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll barrage, uh, maybe trap, uh, multi-shot, and then try and get myself out of the out of the rune. Sorry. Actually, Ankil, can you can you like explain? I, I'm pretty hunter noob. I mean, I was I was a hunter in vanilla, <clears throat> but that was a long time ago. And can you just explain the specs right like right now, the state of them, and like what you know? Do you change specs for certain fights? Um, I'm sure you do. Well, funny enough, the weakest spec to play as right now is survival, but I don't like beast mastery, and I'm not really geared or jammed or enchanted for uh, for marksmanship. I know uh, Caldi is, and she's doing pretty well with it. Um, horsemanship is pretty good for uh, burst damage. Beastmaster is good for burst damage. Um, yeah, I think uh, right now overall, I think Beastmaster uh, has the edge on the other two specs once you have your four piece. Um, which is funny because I forget what the Beastmaster four piece actually does. I know the, the two piece. Um, your kill command has a chance to reset the cooldown on a bestial wrath, which is awesome um, when it happens. Right, and that's like a uh, cooldown, right? Yeah, bestial wrath is your cooldown that um, increases your damage, your pet's damage, and it reduces the uh, focus cost of everything. So what generally happens is if you have full focus and hit uh, bestial wrath, you'll hit a uh, kill command and then spam arcane shots because you don't run out of focus and then you get a second kill command in and either one of those kill commands does have a chance to reset your bestial wrath so you can just uh, do that uh, get back up to full focus and then do it again depending on uh, depending on RNG um, where I run into trouble is never happens for me I think I have it reset like twice in a fight but then I go to a target dummy and it resets every time so <laughs> Um, right. Now, marksmanship. Marksmanship, it started out... Uh, marksmanship was interesting. It started out kind of okay, and then it got really, really weak. And now it's really, really strong again. And uh, I haven't been entirely keeping up with the notes just because I've been busy with not keeping up with the patch notes. And uh, somewhere along the line, I don't know if it's sling, uh, because historically survival has never scaled well. Um, but now uh, marksmanship has kind of overtaken it. So on most fights, beast mastery and marksmanship are the two specs that you'll want to swap between, and survival just kind of drops off. Um, that said, I prefer survival, so I play it. Right. Survival is your go-to, like for a long time now. Oh yeah, I've, I've been using survival since uh, since Wrath actually. Okay. Yeah, I find I find survival the most fun. Um, I used to play marks, but everything so is all castable, and like 
I like I don't if I'm gonna play a hunter, I'm playing a hunter because I don't want to cast. Like I don't want to be a caster. I want to play ranged, but I want to just like hit shit. And survival, you just like click all the things, and they all do th rocks and shit, and it's just fucking so much more fun. <clears throat> Yeah, like I was Marks and Vanilla, and a little bit through Burning Crusade. Didn't play them till Kata, and then I was trying all the specs, and I definitely um, in Kata decided on survival. It was pretty awesome, like procs and stuff is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hunter is quite fun. Like, like because it was interesting because I played I played a mage when I first started, and I started in Kata, so I'm like still newbie, like newbie quote unquote, but. Then I switched to a melee class, DK, and I never looked back. I was like, nope. And then I played a Hunter and Miss for PvP, and it was just, like, so much fun. I'm like, oh, my God, I need to play Hunter more. And then, <clears throat> for whatever reason, Marks became really unfun. And I was like, okay, I don't really want to play the Hunter. And then I was like, okay, I'll switch to Survival and try it. And, yeah, it was just like, GG. Even though I haven't leveled him, but fully yet. I know, I know for a while there, uh, aimed shot was just stupid and you never even used it. So you had basically arcane shot and chimera shot, so what marksmanship became was just spamming steady shot, waiting for chimera shot to come off cooldown, hitting it, and then going back to uh, steady shot. Right. Well, I got something off topic to say. Are we done um, talking about any bosses? or? Well, we haven't quite uh, touched on um, blast furnace attempts. Ooh. Okay, yeah. we should do that first then. Yeah, and then we can uh then yeah, we'll write write down exactly what you're thinking about right now. Just write it down Good somewhere. Call. Write it down right now. Because I'm already forgetting it. Yeah, so write it down. <laughs> we'll talk about Blast Furnace and then we'll we'll actually move into story time. I'll quickly do all that and then we'll uh we'll start uh start that conversation with your thing in the after show if that works for you. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. So okay. So Orgorger was Orgorger, not much different uh, other than uh, I used Necrotic Plague and it worked. So um, the last thing that we did tonight was uh, we worked on Blast Furnace Heroic. And um, so Ankale, I want your your first impressions of that fight. I know we did, um, I know we killed it on normal and it was kind of like, it was kind of like a shit show a little bit, but Heroic seemed a little bit more of a shit show. Uh, from a range perspective, how how much of is it is of it is a shit show for you because i know in melee we're all like surrounded by the ads and shit so uh for you what is it do you enjoy the fight as well or wh what are your thoughts on the the fight my problem is i i enjoy the fight uh, as long as i can get as long as i get pointed out what it is i have to kill like uh, when joel says you know kill kill the big guys, whatever, the bellowers, whatever it is, focus those and then kill this and this. And then when, uh, phase two, kill this specifically, kill this specifically. As long as I know what I have to kill, then it's great for me. Until I look up after I kill something and half the rate is dead and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I focus on what I have to do, you know, um, dispel this, kill this, kill this, ate this, look up, everyone's dead. What happened? That's, that's funny, actually. Because, yeah, it's... I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah, cause, yeah. Because yeah, you'll we'll be in phase two, and I'm kind of like I know what, I kind of know what we're supposed to be on. You know, sometimes I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, I'm just AOEing, so who cares? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of in the back of my head. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna ask what we should be what you know what should we be targeting? And because um, I know like it's not just you and kill. It's most of the. Uh, most of the, like the raid is kind of unsure what to kill, so we definitely need um, people calling out. Actually, I've I've whispered large in the past on other fights, going like, "Hey, you can call out stuff more often if you want. You don't have to worry about being annoying." And large is like, "Yeah, but it's so annoying to keep calling stuff out." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know, I know what you mean." So, I mean, you know someone's got to call stuff out. You know, what's more annoying than calling stuff out all the time? Wiping. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 true. I like I I would be totally fine with calling stuff out. Like I was calling, I was tr I was trying to call out, like kill like skull and stuff like the slag, and then kill the elementalists, and then Arculos <clears throat> chimed in about the same time I was, and I was like, okay, he can do it. That's fine. Um, so like we have people that are willing, but we need consistency. I think is the issue is, w is when we have um, multiple people doing the same thing, it causes either confusion or overlapping due to 
um, vent delay and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so maybe just have maybe we just need to be a little bit more organized with um, who's actually calling stuff. I know the tank's got to worry about other shit, and then you know. So, well, I want to give a shout out to uh, like Archelos. He he's amazing on the fights that he does call stuff out on most mm -hmm. of the time. Um, this isn't obviously his job on this one at this point, but he's normally he's in my opinion he's one of the most consistent call out guys. He uh, like on the train boss. I don't know how he does it. You know how do you how do you play and call stuff out that good? I it it's really that's a skill, and I definitely can't do it. Yeah. I I definitely agree. It's uh, I I know that I can do it, but if I I wouldn't be able to do it on train boss like to the extent Arculos does it. My brain is me. It's funny too because he try he wants to be the top of the healing meter too. So I can't even use the excuse that me and you are focusing on topping the meter because he's doing the same thing. So it's <laughs> like he's uh, I think he's just got he's got that brain that can do many things at once. I guess. Actually, Large will remember, uh, remember uh, we were doing Tordos, this is back in Throne of Thunder, and one of my jobs, it was like one of the first times, for some reason they got me to call out something, it was like some sort of timer, like a stomp, I think. Not the turtles, no, not the turtles, it was a stomp. And like, I seriously couldn't do it to save my life. I'd like call out the first stomp, and then like, I guess my cooldowns would come up or something, and I'd be focused on damage, and then I'd miss the next one. Oh, or breath. Yeah, it could have been breath. It was just like, oh my god. I was like, I am never calling out anything ever again. <laughs> I'm terrible. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. My voice just suddenly disappeared. So yeah. So so blast furnace for so brash for you. Like I know you're literally just AOEing ads and stuff. Is is it is it that much harder uh, or different on heroic than normal to you? Um, no, I actually kind of like the fight uh, a little bit more on Heroic, because it feels like things I do kind of matter, whereas normal was like, what am I, like, it was kind of, when things are tuned to that easy, even though, you know, it, again, it took us quite a few attempts, mm -hmm. when it's tuned that simple, um, it kind of doesn't feel like a fight to me, I'm like, what am I really doing, I'm just padding meters and stuff, Yeah. Um, as long as the ads are dying in a reasonable time. But on this one, it was actually like, you know, it mattered what we were killing first and whatnot. And I had to swap over to the skull to kill it, and we still weren't killing it in time. We had to break the shield twice. So I kind of enjoyed it, because um, that's the thing like, with, with my personality. Like, I like to have either, like, a challenge, or like a, I like to have, like, a DPS challenge. Like, I need to hit a certain number, or, like, you're going to hit the enrage. I need, yeah. like, that little bit of an edge, or I get bored. And yeah. I liked it. Yeah, for me, like, I knew what I was doing, right, but, like, for some reason, it was just, like, I was still kind of clusterfucked in my brain. It was just, like, it just felt, like, yeah, I guess it was just, like, at the end, I kind of knew what I was going to do, because both you and Large said, focus on AoE a bit more this time, and I was like, okay, sweet. Oh, really? So I'm going to, well, because I said it in chat, Joel didn't see it, I guess, so I, I said to Large in my chat, I was like, Lol, Joel does not read chat, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, just focus on AOE a bit more this time." I was like, "Okay, sweet." So this time, whenever there was like a fire dude, because I know Sevti hates those dudes, so I was like, "Okay, these are an issue." So whenever those were up, and I was focusing on AOE, I would cleave off those, and it felt like I actually knew what I was doing for once. Whereas the other times, it's like I'm trying to like get. It feels like nobody's killing the skull, and like it was just like super frustrating to be. In, in melee killing those stupid elements elementalists and i don't know why but it would just it was just annoying so it was like even though i'd run back to kill the skull it was just like i, I'm, I was kind of glad not to worry so much about it i would basically just throw a death and decay over there to help kill the slag and then switch over when the shield was done down bleh, down right i wanted to ask you about that because on the last attempt i, th I think that was the one i told you to do more aoe mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and just to see how it went and i noticed the ads were dying way quicker mm. but i also noticed that your damage was lower so i'm not I, really sure what you think about that yeah i noticed that too and i thought it was kind of interesting um i just i wasn't sure why that was happening and it might have been because like i because i do so much single target damage as well that when with my passive aoe that i kind of need the combination to top the meter or like to get higher up on the meter so 
I mean, I honestly, I'm willing for that fight to sacrifice my overall DPS as long as, long as it helps the adds. But if it's not helping that much, then I'll just keep doing what I was doing originally. That's kind of like how I feel. I'm willing to give up a little bit of DPS to help the raid. But basically, after we get the first kill, I won't be doing that. <laughs> well, it's weird because like you're, it was counterintuitive um, based on what we saw. Because when you were focusing on single target but running Necrotic Plague, which is your automatic dot spreading to everything, amazingness, mm -hmm. um, you were doing more damage than I was doing. And then when you swapped to AOE, like more full time, you were doing like almost 10k less. Yeah. Um, very odd. So I guess it could be the ads were dying quick enough that your dots weren't getting to an optimal stack or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. it wasn't that doesn't affect me very much because they only have to stay alive for like you know 10 seconds to be ideal yeah uh, day is just op with aoe so he's <laughs> always if there's if there's ads days on top <laughs> yeah but yeah mm -hmm. i'm not really sure about that one yeah it, it's 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 hard to know but if you because i wasn't sure how fast the ads were dying in comparison because i wasn't focusing on them before so it's right. it's good to know that they at least by uh, from your perspective they were dying quicker. So they were dying. I would say like like a lot quicker, easily a third quicker. Oh, like well, that's you were good definitely then. adding your weight. Um, it was it was good. Cool. Yeah, because uh, that would be that would be nice. Um, and kill. Like, do you? Is there? I don't know if you've actually talked about this yet. I know Brash asked a question about Hunter, but is survival like your optimal spec for AoE and single target, or just a or just one or the other? It's um, if you mean compared to the other specs, uh, Beastmaster actually edges out if it's uh, really tightly packed mobs. Beastmastery edges out. Uh, survival, and actually, in the last uh, two attempts for Blast Furnace, I went Beastmaster because uh, Beastmaster does have better burst. You now I thought it would help us kill the uh, the uh, whatever the four little guys are called that healed themselves a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> the elemental lists. Yeah, those those buttholes. Yeah. Um, because I, I I honestly think that we're not gonna we're not gonna win that fight. So we can kill them down before the shield comes back up second time. You know, if, if we can't get them down on the first slag that takes their shield down, we're not going to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I agree. Um, I was jumping over there, and on one of them, they were... It was like 50%, and the sh I was looking at the little shell debuff, and it was at 50%, um, you know, till it was going to be back up. And I was going to call out, like, everyone swap to this, like, and stop cleaving. Like, let's kill this one, like, for mm -hmm. once. I didn't say it, and I'm just like focusing and doing it, and it just it didn't go. And even including execute, it just didn't go. So people are, I think we could just ease off the cleave at that point just a little bit. Um, like for me, that's just cutting out whirlwind a little bit and doing more wild strike, I guess. Um, and then we we have to get those down. I totally think that's a required part of the fight. Maybe you can get like the final do takes two accidentally, and you get you know you manage to kind of pull it through, but that seems like it's required i mean it, it may be worth it uh, to focus on cleaning up ads just before you kill the uh, the last elementalist or something like that mm -hmm. right yeah yeah because yeah i agree i feel like i feel like either people are um are slow or they're doing too much aoe and i know i know day uh said to me that he was focusing uh fully on aoe and until until the skull went down so like we have people that are doing full aoe until that skull happens and i know that um dave day single target isn't that strong so maybe this is something that we actually really need to force people like as much as it's gonna suck for rankings and stuff and i'm not specifically saying day i mean from uh, most of us that we need to literally be running single target talents and stuff to kill them because they're the ads are obviously priority like we don't want a shit ton of them but we also need to progress in the fight and we can't do that if the elementalists don't die so i don't know it's gonna be uh i think it's uh it's a really tough call to make but maybe we just need to have like maybe even half the raid you know like strong single targeters switch to single target like full 
and strong AoEers go full AoE and kind of do it that way or something. I don't know. Actually, I have a question for Large. This is going to take a minute. Um, but basically, Large, I, I noticed that I was pulling a lot of aggro and I died on one attempt twice to the same kind of idea. Um, I think it's just like I'm blade storming and one of the guards spawns and it, I, you know, I hit it and I'm, I've got tons of threat on it and then it's on me for like long enough to kill me basically. Um, on the last attempt, I think that was better. Like I didn't pull much aggro, but did you notice that? And was like a lot of other people doing it, like pulling a lot of aggro? Um, and what do you think about that? It was just me. <laughs> of course it was just me. <laughs> it's always just me. Well, I would say um, when we were waiting for uh, for slags to get into position, or waiting for slags to, um, yeah, mostly get into position because they start out pretty far away from the elementalists. Mm -hmm. I would throw out a random barrage or multi strike or something like that just to help out a little bit with AOE, so I wasn't just kind of tapping my foot and waiting. Um, and I would notice the occasional barrage. I would pull aggro just just with that one cast. And um, my guess is it just adds that as soon as they spawn, if they happen to spawn between large doing thrash or whatever it is bears do, um, and then we happen to hit it first, then we get initial aggro, and in my case, it pulls it away from the tank. Um, so for me, it's a it's a huge issue. But, yeah. Um, from your perspective, I don't know if it's um, if it's because thrash is not as effective in a large group for some reason. But uh, I see Lars <laughs> is saying learn to misdirect to me more. I could do that, but that's a global cooldown I can't afford to lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because it's like, I know I know Lars knows this also, but like I'm not intentionally, you know, like blade storming uh, the second things are spawning. Like I'm pretty conscious of it. Like this has been an issue since the beginning of Mists uh, when I, like when I started playing with you guys pretty much. And um, it's just it's just a kind of it's partially a warrior issue. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's crazy, but um, <laughs> blade storm. Yeah, I mean it's it gets me killed a lot, and um, yeah, it was okay in the last attempt. I think it was fine. It was just it was probably more unlucky, and I think it was actually pulling off of Joel more than you at that point. But yeah, it's um, just a comment. I thought. I was wondering, though, basically, if other people were pulling a lot of aggro, too. But it sounds like it was just me, which, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ankle made a funny in chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... You know what I should do is make a macro for my Bladestorm. I don't know if it still exists, but basically make it whisper both or all the pallies and ask them for, like, a salve. So while I'm Bladestorming, I get the salve, and it reduces the, cool down, uh, the threat. That would be amazing. Man, is salve still a thing? That's so weird. I think it's a temporary buff that makes threat reduced during the duration. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, you should totally do that. Just do it to <laughs> Ren. Ren will do it. Yeah. I'll do all the pallies. No, like, between Bella, Ren, or if Rigos there, one of them will get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, so overall impressions, Ankill, with this fight... Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, like I said, I, I like it well enough. It's just that whenever I look up and everyone is randomly dead, then I realize I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> cool. And and Brash? That aggro. I heard the door open. So I'm assuming he muted his mic instantly. Uh, <clears throat> well, my impressions of this fight... Uh, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of like a shit show, and uh, when I'm focusing ads, I kind of, I'm like, okay, I gotta kill the fiery dudes, but then it's like, when I'm trying to passively AoE and single target, it's kind of like, okay, am I doing it right? I don't know, it's like, it's it's not nearly as, it's not so much fun, but it's it's interesting enough to keep me interested. <laughs> Now the problem with uh, with blast furnaces is that's that's a clean burning propane fire there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh man, I caught that. <laughs> that's awesome. See, flame bender uses uh uses butane, which is a bastard gas. <laughs> I can't handle. I can't handle. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Hank Hill is too strong. Oh man, <laughs> it's so good. Sorry, so Brash, your overall impressions of the fight? Oh, I think I already covered it. I like it. I like it on Heroic actually quite a bit. Okay. Um, because it it kind of makes me think a little bit. Like it wakes me up. Um. And yeah, so. Cool. Good. And I think. Yeah, no, I'll I'll leave it at that. Awesome. So, so that's uh what we did for the week, in rating. So now it's time for our favorite segment, story time. So I only have two things here, uh, but they're I think they're quite good. Uh, the first one was from uh, Monday night because I wrote it down instantly because I knew it was going to be gooder. Uh, so we're talking about, um. Well, what, what actually were we talking about? Oh yeah, the stand, like Blast Vern, uh, Bla- oh my god. Holy shit, Black Hand. We're talking about Black Hand. And uh, Joel was talking about getting the melee to get knocked up into the stands. And Large, it, it took a bit, but Large suddenly came in and he was like, Joel, like we, it's impossible for all of us to get knocked up because you know, we're all males. And <laughs> it was a pregnant joke. And yep. it was it was just as bad as all his other jokes, and yeah. So just for a fun fact, if you're male, you cannot get knocked up, whether it's into the stands or pregnancy. Good, good to know. Um, <laughs> the more you no, know. I, I, <laughs> I missed I missed the actual like explanation. I think, or I don't know, missed it was zoned out. <laughs> and then Large said that, and I laughed. Um, I didn't queue up, but I laughed. I, I lolled. I lolled as well. It was good. And the other one was from tonight where Sports was telling a story about how his... It's fun. Actually, I just realized it's funny because Large is answering us before they even hear it because he can hear us in real time. So it's probably really f- fucking with people's heads. I just realized. Large is just the best stalker. <laughs> that <laughs> He's not in our team speak at all. He's just like literally... He's outside of our door. <laughs> All of our doors. He, <laughs> he, may, he may be a bear, but he has cat-like reflexes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, so, so Sports' story was uh, his buddy sent his Sports' mom a picture of his shit because, uh, and me- was meant to send it to Sports, but sent it to Sports' mom instead because he forgot to tell him that they changed numbers. And I thought that was pretty stellar. Wait, 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 wait. S- send him a picture of his shit, did you say? His shit. His literal shit in the toilet shit. <laughs> what? Did you not... In- I don't know why you would send that anyways to anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, what, how does this make sense in any in any case? <laughs> I, I know. He was telling this story. You must have been AFK. Oh my god. I know. It was like, I was like what I mean, the, the fuck? Wow. The only way you could do that is if, is if you preempt it with, hey man, you gotta see this shit here. <laughs> <laughs> Probably did. He's like... And not Probably. realize it's literal. Uh, yeah. So that, kind of like pull my finger, but like way, way <laughs> up to the next level. So. <laughs> exactly. I said pull one finger, not two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So that's uh, that's it for story time. Uh, so basically, uh, that's going to be it for our main pod here tonight. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming in and watching and interacting Please stay tuned, though. We are going to do some more uh, nonsense talk uh, in the after show. Uh, just uh, I want to thank Ankil for joining us tonight. Uh, it was really good. I appreciate you coming on. Well, I don't have work tomorrow, so no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. uh, so uh, I just want to do a couple little plugs here just to remind everybody. I do uh, do streaming Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursday evenings uh, for raids. Thursday nights, every night, every Thursday night, there will be a podcast, uh, normally with a guest. I still have people lined up, so there will be many more. Uh, as you can see on stream, uh, I've, there is the my Twitter, uh, uh, Brash's Twitch, and both of our YouTube. You can check those out. Uh, we have Kill Vids, and the other podcasts are up on my channel there. And uh, yeah. I think uh, that's it for the main pod. I want to thank you all again for coming in. So we're going to take, I think we're going to do a new thing here. We're going to take a five, ten minute break, and then we're going to come back for the after show. So stay tuned.
cool. <laughs>